Hi, it's Steve. Today is day 29 of this 30 days of video series and water fasting at the same time. So it's gradually coming to a close. Um, update on the water fasting. Today, my energy was really sluggish. I got some extra sleep last night. I was in bed for about 10 hours um, and woke up just like really low energy, tired this morning. For the first few hours, I was just like lying in a chair listening to audiobooks. Um, I'm planning to take the day off today other than doing this video, just to take it easy for a bit. Um, been working a lot the last several days, so I feel like I could use a break mentally. And also just physically, my energy's been really low. I can get, you know, like today, I was getting winded just standing up. <laughs> um, so, or, or just going up the stairs. And so that, you know, that's kind of a signal. Okay, let's take a rest day today. Um, I've, uh, weight wise, I've lost a little over 25 pounds so far. So that's, you know, well within expectations for this long of fast. Uh, I'm still on the fence about whether I want to stop after 30 days. Technically, my 30 day point will be um, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Since I started fasting in the morning, I had my last meal was a, a breakfast. I think I had a, a, a fresh uh, fruit and veggie juice. Um, on the morning of April 14. So this Sunday, I believe, at 10 a.m. will be my official 30-day point. Um, so I might be, I might keep going a bit longer. I might go as long as 40 days. As I mentioned in a previous video, I'm not sure. 40 days is realistically the longest I can go of, because of logistics reasons, having an event coming up and needing to have at least a, a couple of weeks to gradually break the fast. And I wanna break the fast very gradually. Um, I definitely came off of it too fast last time when I did the 17 day water fast last year, only gave myself like three, three, three and a half days or so. Um, and that was, you know, I've, I've, I definitely felt like food sitting really heavy inside me, especially when I started having cooked food again. So I'm going to start really gradually, like with some diluted fruit, fresh fruit juice, um, some really juicy fruit, like watermelon, cantaloupe, that kind of thing, in small volumes, like maybe just a cup's worth. And then, um, you know, gradually progress to other raw foods and probably not have any starches or oils or complicated foods, anything like that the first week. Maybe a lot of mono meals, you know, where you just eat like one type of food at a meal, um, so, you know, like a bowl of fresh berries or something like that, and then gradually work up to other raw foods, and then, you know, introduce some fats, and gradually work up to cooked foods. Um, you know, at this point, I've, I've, I still have, like, a lot of cravings for food when I see it, but uh, it's not, it's not hunger. Like, you know, sometimes my stomach will growl and things like that, but it's not really this feeling like I absolutely need to eat or, or that I'm hungry. It's just like this, this um, psychological desire for food. I'd say for the, this whole fast, the most difficult aspect was not the physical part, but the psychological part. I, I found this fast um, just a lot more difficult psychologically than physically, which I found kind of interesting. I thought that going this long, it would be physically more difficult. Um, and that I'd be psychologically used to it, but I still don't feel totally 100% psychologically comfortable with it. It's just like the, you know, the, the absence of the meals, I still do miss that even 29 days into it now. The topic I wanted to share uh, today is about, you know, in a general sense, this idea of outgrowing things. When you're on a path of personal growth and you're just on, you know, like having lots and lots of growth experiences, it's very common and very normal to have as part of that process, part of your life, um, the experience of outgrowing situations and people and so on. Um, you know, you may eventually reach a point where you start feeling this pressure, like you're out of alignment with your current situation or your environment or your social landscape. And you feel like this desire to start moving on. Initially, for me, that often shows up as a negative thing. I start feeling resistance or some kind of negativity towards something in my reality. And it takes a while for me to get to the positive side where I start thinking about the vision that I want to create. Uh, some of the things you might outgrow, um, you know, are situations uh, that you're in and you just feel like this is not in alignment with me, the situation that's coming up in my life, whatever it is, it just doesn't feel like it's, it's me anymore. 
Um, it feels like it's too much in the past, like I'm pulling this past baggage with me and I just don't want to deal with it anymore. You might outgrow things like um, habits and behaviors, uh, especially old health habits. A lot of people who, who get on a path of growth, they end up um, eating a much purer diet. They get rid of a lot of the processed junk foods and, and move, you know, get rid of the sodas. Um, many of them give up animal products because they just find that they can think more clearly and they have uh, just more emotional happiness and more, more stableness and just better health, endurance, energy, flow uh, when they get rid of animal products from their diet. Um, exercise, you might feel like, okay, it's time to get into exercise or upgrade your habits there and you just feel out of alignment with the old and you want to take on something new, um, upgrade your physical body in some way. Uh, you know, that's a very common experience. The people in your life, the relationships you have, the friends you have, the social network you have, the coworkers you have, you might feel out of alignment with one or more of, of those aspects of your life at some point and feel like you're, you're just outgrowing them. Um, you know, it's, it's just like the experience we often have of, um, like you might have this experience of, of having old classmates reconnect with you on Facebook and you just realize, wow, we were great friends when we were in sixth grade or whatever, but now we just have nothing in common and we've just outgrown each other. And, and uh, that's very common with people. And, the, you know, it's, it's important, like, if somebody outgrows you, it's not, not to take it so personally because they may just need um, to, uh, to just have new experiences. And it doesn't mean that they've leveled up on you necessarily. It... Uh, it means you've gone in different directions with your life. Some people though, they just grow faster than others and they, they speed through and, and they can't get clingy with relationships uh, for too long if the relationships are not keeping pace with them in all areas of life, uh, especially friendships. And, and you know, it's, you know, as a general rule, you don't wanna get clingy with something you're feeling out of alignment with. You wanna allow yourself that freedom and that flexibility to keep, um, keep experiencing new and fresh connections because it'll give you so much more joy and so much more juice in life. And if you don't do that, you're just gonna end up sinking into more resentment and more resistance about the relationships you're in because you're gonna sense inside internally that they're holding you back, that they're creating a bit of social drag on you. Another thing you might outgrow are your old values or your standards, um, the, you know, the, the principles you hold dear. Uh, some things that you valued in the past, you might just think, oh, I don't really don't care that care about that anymore now. It's not like in alignment with who I want to be. And you might feel like you need to upgrade your values to a higher level of integrity or your standards need to increase. Um, you know, it could be you know, your standards for your behaviors, your daily habits, um, how you think about yourself, the way you present yourself to the world. All that can be something, you know, the past version you can outgrow and need something higher quality for the future. You might outgrow your current work, the projects you're working on, the tasks you're doing, your career uh, path, your job if you have one, your business is, is very common. Um, for instance, I felt like after 10 years working, running a computer games business that I eventually outgrew it. It just wasn't me anymore. I just thought, eh, you know, I don't, this isn't, this isn't what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I felt like I needed to move on from that. It was a challenging transition, but I and I resisted it for a while, even though I saw it coming. But it was really important to to finally make that transition and to unlock a lot more growth. Uh, interestingly, you can also outgrow your income level. Um, that's an experience I've been having. Um, I've been at the same income level for like the past 10 years or so. And this year I finally decided, no, I really need to like upgrade this because I'm just bored with the current income level. I feel like it's not that I need more money, but it's like I want to take on the challenges of being able to earn a higher level of income, like you know, five times it or ten times it, and see what that's like. And for me, what inspires me about it is not like having more money to spend, but the person I have to become and the changes I need to make to myself to take on um, that kind of challenge. And that's something I've been enjoying a lot and really um, inspiring me a lot. And that's, you know, that's been pretty cool because normally I would, you know, make like in the past 10 years or so since like 2006 uh, um, and even some years before that, I think I'm making like six figures a year. And, you know, just recently I had the experience of just making um, six figures in the past couple of weeks. 
And so that's kind of cool to like, you know, have that kind of upgrade. Um, and, and it's not the money again that inspires me the most. I mean, yeah, it's cool to have like an extra, you know, chunk of money to, to be able to spend on something, but I haven't even spent it. It's, it, you know, it's just sitting there in my, in my bank account. Um, to me, I'm so much more caught up and inspired in all the growth I have to do to be able to like maintain that and increase it and build up to that. Uh, like for me, one of the biggest challenges is I know I need to get into outsourcing and delegation in a bigger way than I ever have before. I've dabbled in this a bit. Um, I have hired people in the past, independent contractors. I had a, uh, I had people, you know, in uh, a team with my uh, uh, computer games business. Um, and so I could do teamwork, but I'm not like at the level where I'm really integrated. Uh, I'm really integrating it on a regular basis, on a daily basis in my life. And so I, that's something that inspires me to want to do because I know it's going to create a lot of growth and challenge. And uh, it's just a different way of thinking, a different mindset I have to get into. Um, what else could you outgrow? You can outgrow your stuff, your physical items, your possessions. You could outgrow your home or your living space. You could outgrow your workspace. You, um, you can also outgrow the information flow into your life. Um, sometimes, you know, like in the past, I would, um, I, when I first started blogging, I would read a lot of other bloggers' work. And I just felt like at one point I kind of outgrew reading a lot of blogs and lately I've been reading um, many more books. I put, um, I, I buy books like five or six at a time and I'll put, uh, you know, like the ebook versions on my um, iPad and, or audiobook versions on my um, iPhone. And then I just listen to them, you know, quite often, usually going through a book or two every week and listening to them when I exercise. And I notice like the types of books I read over time change a lot. Like when I, when I was really getting into personal development, I read lots and lots of personal development books. And then I felt like that's getting too much of the same after doing a thousand or so of those types of books. It's like the same type of stuff over and over again. And now I like reading a whole bunch of different kinds of books, like books on history or science or technology, um, you know, just or just like out there interesting, weird stuff. I recently re read a book called The Revenge of Analog, which was really fascinating about how analog technology in different ways are coming back, such as vinyl records and um, and, th and, and uh, you know, paper notepads and things like that. And um, that was really fascinating. I love just like broadening my horizons more and getting outside my industry because it often gives me really cool ideas. So if you have an information flow into your life, like the same types of sources you're reading, um, or listening to podcasts, videos, whatever, and you want to mix it up a bit, that is a good thing to consider upgrading and look for higher quality sources. Higher quality meaning higher quality for you. Like what do you need at this point in your life? Are you at a, a phase where you want to really focus and go deep in some area or you want like more uh, breadth and, and uh, covering a lot of different ideas and giving you a lot of different types of stimulation? Why do we, you know, why do we reach this point? Why do we, why do we have this experience of outgrowing things? Um, I think there's a number, of, a n number of reasons this pops up. One is that, you know, after a while, the old and the familiar just doesn't challenge us anymore. It gets, it, it gets comfortable. It becomes too familiar, and we're just not able to extract as much growth from it. The brain is trained by input, and if the input is repetitive, it doesn't have as much of a training effect. If the input is new, it has much more of a training effect. But of course, the flip side of that is that it puts us outside of our comfort zone. So in order to really grow fast, we have to get comfortable with being um, outside our comfort zone more often. Uh, another reason is that as we, take, as we wanna take on bigger challenges, we need more support or we need different support. The, the level of support we might have in our life is just going to maintain where we are most of the time. But if we want to grow, like if you want to grow your income or raise your standards or um, you know, take on new types of challenges in any area of life, you often um, need more social support for that. You need a, a better, stronger network. You need better friends. You might need a, a stronger relationship partner who can handle that type of growth experience with you without resisting it. Uh, that's, you know, that's another thing. It's just like you, you may feel internally, you may wonder, like, how much faster could you grow 
if you had a network of really supportive, growth-oriented friends in the area where you wanted to grow. Like, if you want to work on passive income streams, what would it do to your life if you, if you had five friends who are all earning passive income and they were happy to teach you? Uh, what would it do for your life if you wanted to go vegan and you have five vegan friends and they're happy to teach you and they have all been doing it for years and they're like, oh, I could show you, share with you recipes, I could share with you about the challenge, I could encourage you to, you know, how to, how to do it, how to make it work, how to make it practical, dealing with the social consequences. Um, you know, what if you want to quit your job and start a business and you have five friends or so that all want to, you know, do, either do that with you or they've all done it? What if you want to become a digital nomad? And you meet people who are digital nomads and they're already doing it. Um, that, that's one of the reasons I, I started Conscious Growth Club is to bring these kinds of people together because I find that a lot of the people who read my blog or a lot of people watching these videos that I'm creating now, are, they all have very similar goals. They want to be healthier. They want to be happier. They want to be more fulfilled. They want more freedom in their lives. They, they want um, you know income streams that you know, either are, are, are very passive where they can like do the work once and then have a nice ongoing stream and gives them a lot of freedom to travel or things like that if they want or work on hobbies or explore other aspects of life than having to work, work, work all the time. Uh, or they want to create active income streams that they really enjoy, like doing speaking or, um, you know, doing consulting or coaching or something like that. So it's at least work they love that's earning them the income and move away from things they dislike. They want to have more of a sense of spiritual alignment and flow, like there's a sense of meaning and purpose in their life. Um, and, and by bringing all those people together in one group, then like people instantly get that. As soon as they sign up, they instantly, you know, there's, there's a bunch of people in the group who are already earning passive income. There's a bunch of people in the group who are already uh, digital nomads, and they've been doing that for a long time, some for years. There's, um, you know, there's people in the group already running their own businesses. Uh, people in the group, there's actually a bunch of vegans in the group or people who are working on becoming vegan um, or people who are dabbling in raw foods or have a lot of experience with raw foods. So that's been really cool to see. So, uh, you know, that's, that's like one example. You can also create that on your own. Um, you can, you know, you, you can go out and try to find these people and integrate them into your, into your social circle. Um, or you can join an existing coaching club if there's just like really one thing, one aspect that's really important to you. I, I do that sometimes. Like uh, um, I belong to a coaching club um, that's, that's for online entrepreneurs. And that's a place where I connect with people who are, um, you know, like taking on challenges similar to mine where they want to really increase their, their income and their impact by, um, you know, learning how to really take their business to the next level. So that, you know, you can have multiple groups like this. In fact, I encourage you to do so. I don't think it's necessary to have just like one group, you know, fits all for everything. Uh, some areas you might want to have more breadth, some you might want to have more depth. Um, so like that, that support aspect is really, really important when you want to, um, when you want to get out of that comfort zone and take the next leap to, to some new level in some area of your life. When you're feeling out of alignment with the old and you're, you feel like you've outgrown it and it's no longer you, it's not stimulating anymore, and you want to just get to the next level in your life. Uh, the social support, if you can add that in, success is almost automatic <laughs> if you add it in, in a big way. Uh, it's, it's such a key part. And it's, um, you know, if I could look back at one mistake I made the most when I was first starting out on this path of growth and, and living consciously and starting my own business, it would just be that I didn't pay enough attention to the importance of social support. I didn't think it mattered. And if you're telling yourself, yeah, that sounds good, but I don't think it matters, that's stupid. <laughs> just to be honest, that's a stupid attitude. Um, it's, I, I understand the attitude because I had it for years and I get it. I get that level of thinking. You don't think it matters. It does way, way more than you expect. Um, if, you know, and, and, when I heard that kind of attitude, I heard it from Brian Tracy. I was listening to an audio program of his about how just how important that is for, you know, when you've outgrown a situation and you want to get to a new level in life, about how important it is to, um, to create a new social circle. And I, I dismissed it the first time I heard it. And after listening to that same audio program, it's like so many times, I f and, and going broke and bankrupt, I finally decided to take his advice. And it worked wonders, like very quickly, like really fast transformation. Within a year, I was doing better than I ever had before in business. And it was amazing. 
And I, the reason I took his advice is because I, I said to myself, you know what? He's getting better results in life in the areas that I want to get results in. Maybe he knows something I don't. Maybe I should just be a little bit more humble and listen to his advice. So if you think, um, if you think like, you know, his advice, he's getting better results, or you think I'm getting better results, or somebody else who's saying this is getting better results than you in life, maybe just, you know, crack a little bit of a doubt into your shell that says you can do all this by yourself and um, consider and explore the idea. You don't have to believe it. You just have to explore it. And so that's what I did. And within a month, maybe even just a week of exploring it, I was convinced. I was like, oh, this is obviously going to work. Because <laughs> um, when you have so many people just encouraging you, it makes a huge difference. Um, so many people you can turn to for help as a resource, asking questions, whenever you get stuck, it's, it makes a huge, huge difference in life. But you have to have that as a, you know, this has to be a resource of people who know what they're doing, people who are getting results. You can't just ask random friends, like, how should I make passive income or, you know, how do I get healthier? They may talk you out of it. They may not care. They may not have the knowledge and experience. But if there's people already doing it in your life, that's where the gold is. Uh, you might also want... You might also be feeling like your current life is just a bit low stimulation for you. It's low energy. It's not that exciting or all that interesting. The passion level you're experiencing is kind of low. So that's another um, reason uh, you know, you, you're outgrowing the past. It's just like your, your mind, your heart, your body is telling you mm, this is boring. <laughs> or you might have the opposite situation where it's like too stressful, where you're just like wanting to get away from the stress and the frustration. Um, so it's like telling you you want to have a different energetic relationship to life. Um, you want to have a different experience of flow in life. You might also want access to more resources and better tools and things like that professionally. Like you feel, you feel like the way you're working professionally, working on this aging computer and you know crappy phone and not being able to afford to upgrade it, you might just say, you know what? I'm done working with these crappy tools. I want the best for myself. Um, and that could be another reason for wanting to have, you know, wanting to um, have this upgrade and feeling like you've outgrown your old tools professionally. Uh, or even personally, like you might look at the stuff in your life and go, eh, this stuff isn't me anymore. I want, I want higher quality. I want to change the way I relate to, to my stuff in life. I want to appreciate it, like I talked about in a previous vid video. Um, what, are your, you know, what are your options here? Well, you basically have two. Um, you know, I mean, there's, sure, there's a gray area in the middle, but you can stay put, and that's probably going to have a bit of resentment attached to it if you do. It's going to leave you in a state of dissatisfaction. It might give you some edginess towards the people in your life. You might see yourself getting a bit grumpy now and then. Um, or you can graduate, in which case you're going to embrace some excitement and some new intensity and probably a bit of fear. If you're leaning into some kind of fear when you're doing this, you're making the right choice. <laughs> um, it's almost always the case. You know, it's not, it's not just like an automatic flow thing all, all the time. Because if you've been stuck for a while, you probably have a bit of resistance to changing and you might have to work through some limiting beliefs and things like that. But the key thing is just to keep leaning into it with action. And if, if you need more help with that, watch the previous video I did uh, you know, with a, in this 30-day series. I'm not sure which number it was, which day it was, but the, you know, the title was Lean Into It. Um, so, or lean, to, lean Into Action, sorry. Um, and if you, if you do this graduation process, the benefit is you get faster growth. And that's beautiful. My advice here on how to make this decision is to really trust your gut. Trust, the, trust your intuition if you can. And if you're feeling very out of alignment with your intuition, um, eat like raw foods for 10 days or so, and it will spike your in intuition. Just eat like 100% raw vegan for 10 days, and you'll feel way more intuitive. It'll give you way more clarity. You might get a bit of detox symptoms like the first three days to seven days or so if you've never done that before, or if you've been eating a very crappy diet but that will help clarify your intuition. Or do something like a green smoothie cleanse where you just have nothing but green smoothies for a week and that will spike your clarity. So if you're not really clear, clean up your physiology for a, you know, at least a temporary period and it'll really help a lot with getting clear. Um, so you can, you know, you can, if, you, if you can get that feeling inside, like, yeah, it's time, it's time for a change, you know? It's like definitely feeling something's off here and I need to go and make this change. And 
um, listen to your gut. And yeah, it will be difficult because your mind might argue with you a bit and try to talk you out of it, but you're not going to be happy if you do that. Um, you know, you need, to, you need to be in that sweet spot of growth to have a fulfilling life, and that means taking on some kind of challenge because the challenge is what makes you smarter. You naturally do this when you're a child. You know, uh, kids don't resist the growth path so much. They're constantly learning. You know, you don't just go, I'm, well, I'm content with crawling. I don't really need to learn this whole walking thing. Or I'm content with baby talk. I don't need to learn language. <laughs> you know, kids just constantly pick things up and they learn things. And they're, they're always like um, pushing the edge of their comfort zone forward because uh, they're less self-conscious about that sort of thing. And I encourage you to be like less self-conscious about this. Don't worry so much about other people's judgment. That is, that is a hard thing, probably the hardest thing about, about outgrowing situations is outgrowing the people that you become very attached to. And, you know, I got to say that is tough. Um, when I was, um, you know, like 18, 19 years old and I was doing a lot of shoplifting, one of the hardest things was just like let going, letting go of old friends during that time that were um, immersing me in the old. And, I, you know, I switched cities to do it, which made it easier. But it was still, it was still difficult because I missed a lot of those old friends. And oddly, you know, when I reconnected with one of those friends, um, my stealing partner, years later, like I looked him up online and found him and, and we, uh, we reconnected. Um, I think it was more than a decade after we did that. And we reconnected a few times since then. Um, I think it's been more than like 10 years since we last talked. But it was really interesting to see because we were bad influences on, on each other when we were together. But when we got apart, we both went totally different paths um, and, and, and very positive paths. Uh, he got, uh, you know, we both got married. We both um, became vegan. And I was like, I couldn't believe that he was a vegan. And I think he couldn't believe that I was because when we were together, we were having like Burger King all the time. Uh, so that was really interesting to see is like there can be a very positive side to letting go of relationships that are just not serving you. Because if they're not serving you, they're probably not serving the other person. You're just holding each other fixed into a low energy state. And when you let go um, and loosen your grip a bit, it gives both people a chance to grow. And ultimately, it's not up to you what the other person does or what the other people involved do. They may grow, they may stagnate, that's up to them. But you can't, you can't let yourself remain loyal to the past. You have to put your loyalty on your path of growth, on your vision of yourself. If you don't do that, then all the people you might serve will not be served. Um, that's why I think it's so important to align your path of growth with some kind of sense of contribution to others because it puts a bit more positive pressure on you and gives more meaning and purpose to your path of growth. It's not just about you, it's all about the people you're going to help. If I had stayed loyal to my decision to work in the computer gaming industry, I'd just be still working on computer game projects and probably being dissatisfied with the work. I might be speaking at game conferences still, talking about how to make better games and things like that. And it wouldn't have been hell necessarily, but all the people whose lives I've touched through working in the personal development field, none of that would have happened. All the other people I inspired to write books or get into blogging, um, I won't name names specifically, but there are a lot of famous bloggers out there that you probably know about that told me personally that they got into blogging because of reading my blog. Because I was, you know, I got into it really early, like in 2004, and I started sharing about how to make income through blogging. And it was this post I wrote, I think back in 2005, called How to Make Money from Your Blog that inspired lots and lots of people to start getting into blogging as a way of making a living. Um, and so there are, there are a lot of uh, famous bloggers out there who may or may not be doing this type of work today um, if I hadn't made that decision to get on this path. And then, of course, all the ripples of all the people they helped, too. Uh, so that's been extremely gratifying, is like knowing and seeing many of these ripples um, that wouldn't have happened, you know, or maybe they would have happened much later or some other way, but certainly not in the, in the way they did and not as early. Uh, that's, that um, always you know, gets to me and tells me I've got to keep growing because if I don't keep stepping it up and keep pushing myself to keep growing and allow myself to outgrow the old and move on from it, um, I'm, I'm holding back from creating all, all those extra ripples that I might create by stepping it up. And if you can adopt that same mindset, even if you haven't gotten into you know, your particular choice of field that you want to work on long term yet, 
um, I think that's really important. It's really a big part of the motivation for allowing yourself to outgrow the old. Another tip is not just to rest in that dissatisfaction, but when you start feeling that dissatisfaction and that resentment for the place you're in now, uh, the situation, the people, the career that you're stuck in, that you don't like, whatever it is you know that's your outgrowing, um, focus on the other side and spend some time mentally visualizing a vision of what could be, of what you could have instead of that. Like, what is the next level for you? Uh, that was that was you know really important for me in my in my life. Uh, when I was um, you know in my relationship with Aaron, uh, you know married for many years, and I was feeling you know like out of alignment with the relationship. But I, I didn't know it was like is it good to for us to you know end this relationship or should we try to make it work somehow? That that level of thinking of focusing on the problem never helped. It just dragged things on for years and without resolution. And so what really helped was instead I focused on what is the type of ideal relationship I really want to experience? You know, at, the, at this point in my life, what do I want to experience now? What would be really healthy and good for me? And I focused on that type of relationship and I would spend some time just sitting on the couch mentally visualizing that type of experience. And I imagined like a woman that I would travel with a lot and somebody who had a you know, really high uh, lifestyle compatibility with me. And I didn't know what she looked like, so I just pictured like a ghost image of a woman, and I picture specific scenes. And that's really important to get specific, like something you can visualize, something you can see on a movie screen. Don't just use words to describe it. Picture it in your mind. If you can't put it on a movie screen, I think you're BSing yourself a lot. So it's got to be a scene. Uh, our minds work, you know, very visually. Uh, and, and uh, you know, we have a lot of... Um, you know, there's been just like so much literature about the, you know, the success people experience from visualizing their goals as opposed to just verbally affirming them or emotionally feeling them. Uh, and when I would like visualize these scenes, I'd imagine us, you know, walking through Europe or, you know, like some European city like Paris or something. And, you know, within a couple of years, I was in Paris with my new girlfriend. Um, so I didn't, I didn't um, force a decision in my relationship with Aaron what I did is I visualized what I want, and then I basically let the universe decide. I said, universe, you can make, um, you can make this possible through my current marriage, or it can come to an end, and you know, I'll transition to a new relationship. And that, that approach has been very powerful. You can use this in any area, any area of your life. You can use it with your health, your, with your business. Visualize uh, what you want to experience. You know, play around with that in your mind. You don't have to get it perfect the first time, but if you do that every day for a while, I would do it like almost daily for several months. And after doing that for a while, I began to get so interested in the vision and I played around with it and imagined so many different scenes of what I could do in my ideal relationship that, um, that it you know, transitioned fairly quickly. It was like really uh, fast, like eventually just a few months from um, you know, the marriage uh, winding down and getting into a, a new relationship. And that was, you know, that was very, uh, a very powerful technique. So I encourage you to use it too. You know, focus on what you want. If you focus your mind on what you want, it'll help you create it. And you don't have to decide whether that comes up through your, some kind of evolution of your current situation or relationships, uh, or if it comes about through some bigger shift, like having to let go of the old and getting something totally new coming in. The... You know, the ultimate key here is you've got to trust this process. You've got to trust this process that focusing on what you want and, um, and getting clear will eventually help you get there. Um, of course, you have to lean into it with action too. But you've got to trust also your body and that when you start getting those signals inside yourself that, you know, this lack of alignment, is, it's not working. You know, or this lack of alignment is just like, it's not working for me. It's not doing, it's not... Give me the life I want to have. I need to make a change here. And the thing is, when you're really in alignment with the, th with the, you know, the aspects of your life and you're really flowing and you're growing, you don't have so much of that doubt. It's not really there. It's, it's not, you know, you're just so caught up in the excitement and the energy and the passion of what you're experiencing and you just see like the sky's the limit and you're growing and growing and growing. And you might have more of a feeling of like, wow, I need some breaks. I need to catch my breath. That's kind of like the feeling I have. You know, like, wow, it's like things are going so quickly. Um, like so many goals just, you know, s s snapping together so fast, like losing 25 pounds in 20, 
just over 28 days so far. Um, and, uh, you know, and getting into video and uh, doing 30 videos in 30 days, you know, th doing this day 29 one now. It's like coming together really quickly, these, uh, these various goals, when you're in alignment. And when you're not in alignment, that's when you're constantly wondering and constantly doubting and asking the question. So if you're in like that perpetual ambivalence phase where you're not sure if it's okay, it's not okay. <laughs> um, it, because when you're in that not okay phase, you, f you often feel ambivalent. If it's really, really not okay, then you're like totally clear, this sucks. But if you're also in that ambivalence phase um, where it's like, eh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, that's also the this sucks phase. You're just in denial about how, how much better it could be. Uh, so don't settle. You know, don't settle for, for less than that awesome path of growth. Keep pushing yourself, keep growing. I'll see you tomorrow.